So you know when you've been doing something for a long time and you get into your habits and you just use things the way you've always used them and you don't think another thing of it. I'm like that with guitar pedals. I've used them the exact same way since I purchased them and I haven't done anything different with them in a long time. I need to break out of that shell. So I had my buddy Jonah come over who knows a whole lot more about pedals than I do and he helped me kind of wrap my head around what is out there, what's possible for guitar because I haven't put a rig together like that in a long, long time and knowing where to start can be really, really difficult. In this first video, we put together a really small, almost a beginner pedal board, playing live, playing in the studio and still have everything you could possibly need to make just about any sound. In the next video after that, we're gonna take a look at a more extensive setup where almost your imagination is the limit. We're incorporating MIDI, we're doing multiple delays and verbs, stacking different overdrives. I also do one with bass. How could you be a professional? If you're excited to go down that rabbit hole with me, hit the like button. Remember to hit the subscribe button because you don't want to miss these. I had a blast. If you like this style of video, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm genuinely interested because this is different for me. If you don't like it, that's also helpful. Let me know down in the comments below. This video is not sponsored by anyone, so please hit that subscribe button. If you are interested, I'm gonna put links for just about everything I could find that we talk about in the description below. That said, some of these pedals could be found used for much cheaper than new. I encourage you to look. Without further ado, let's start talking some pedals. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be a fun day. I love that the QC is getting surrounded by pedals. I know, right? This is beautiful. Yeah, I like the new layout. What was it like when you guys were here? And just like stuff was like in a similar area, it was a little bit different. They're gonna generally lean towards the louder. Yeah, and it's. I don't know how I would put this on a pedal board. That's why I had that massive thing and it sat in a suitcase forever. Like it doesn't make sense to carry it around, but it sounds so good. Is the compressor good on it? Oh yeah, it gets very spanky. Perfect. <laughs> This is my buddy Jonah, air wiggler, is that what you said? Yeah, professional air wiggler. <laughs> Put that on a business card. Really talented producer, really talented musician, and he knows way more about pedals than I do. And so I wanted to see, let's build a couple different rigs. And so what do we have, like a stripped down one that's like yeah. four-ish, five pedals. So I was gonna walk through a couple different rig options. One being if you're doing like pub gigs, you know, covers, weddings, where you don't need a whole ton of like whole ton of stuff. Um, kind of my thought process for that kind of sound. And then maybe something a little more over the top for like your church players or a more ambient setup that might have a little more going on, pedals interacting with each other, that kind of thing. So first up, power supply. I'll say that because that's yeah. important to me. <laughs> I'll go for it. I settled on this one spot pro after going with like just a one spot yeah. and a daisy chain. Biggest thing to help tone, regardless of whatever pedals you pick, is good power. Oh, for sure. I've actually got the same one. You do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, we're making a lot of assumptions here, so take some things with a grain of salt. So I've got a couple different guitars. Uh, we'll start off, this is a Glory Guitars Voice of Thunder. It's like a JM style body with tele appointments and like different pickups. Uh, I've got a PAF in the bridge, it's a Firebird pickup in the neck. Uh, I'm gonna brought my Strat along. HSS, pretty typical Strat setup. It's the same bridge pickup. Fralin PAF, I think? Yeah, we'll show off a couple different sounds. And for humbuckers, I like to pick certain drive pedals. For single coils, I like to pick certain drive pedals. So we're running into a uh, couple different amps. I'm in stereo, we've got a Bassman. Uh, it's like a 68. And then a Risen Milano 20. Somewhere between a Tweed and a Marshall-ish. <laughs> Uh, but those are hard pan stereos. Like we've got a couple effects that'll be like ping ponging delays. You'll hear those. And um, then we've got a monitor set up for us here. This Enjoy. is just for us in the room. You are hearing a more direct mic'd version. We hear like the raw without yeah. some pedals and then we'll run down like the thought process here. Yeah, so you want to plug this in to that delay over there. that be considered edge of breakup or a maybe a little, maybe a little past that but the way i like to set up my amps is so if i'm digging in really hard they're doing that but it still cleans up really nicely it's like i would still put it in the edge of breakup territory that's clean like you're covering a lot of ground 
<laughs> yeah, a lot of it's just picking dynamics and volume knob is kind of like how I like to set my amps. Part of that's just I think amps sound good when they're pushed really loud. You have no pedals. No pedals right now. What's your first pedal you buy? Oh, a tuner. Easily. A tuner. A tuner. Of course. Uh, it's like uh, one of my drummer I was playing with this weekend he said very wise words. Guitar players who don't use tuners are like people who don't shower. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we all know people that they shower once a month. It affects everyone around them, so it, but it's a vibe in certain circles. Like, you know, you don't use a tuner, maybe you don't shower. I showered. <laughs> yeah, I definitely shower. I'm showered. a tuner guy. I, I take like two showers a day. <laughs> this is why I have like two tuners in my pedal. So uh, why, why this one? Uh, it's a personal thing. So I like strobe tuners. Um, part of it, I do all my own setup work and like guitar repair. And so having a tuner that I can set intonation with, that's really accurate and quick is important to me. So I've loved the Peterson stuff. I own a couple different tuners from them. This is the one that lives in my backpack. Uh, I actually use it as a bass DI sometimes. It's got a nice DI function, but I just think it works really good. You can see it in sunlight, which is mm. another thing. Like I've had a couple different tuners that are great indoors, but then you pop them outside, which mm -hmm. is where like 80% of my gigs are at this point. And you know, you can't see it. And that's a good point to take into account too. Like you make a living playing music in some yeah. aspect. This is like, this is stuff you actually employ. Oh, for sure. I mean, these are all like every pedal here that I brought. And like, honestly, some of yours as well. Like I've used in various, you know, professional environments, be that like uh, tracking records or playing gigs out. Like, you know, a lot of this isn't just like I sat in my bedroom and played guitar, <laughs> in my opinions. Uh, another thing on tuners that I'm super hot on is having an always on feature. So no matter what, like right now it's muted, I'm able to tune. But even if it's unmuted, you're still seeing the guitar signal. And uh, for me, that's really important because during a song, I don't necessarily always want to have to mute to tune. Uh, but I'm playing like open chords or something, you know, I'll sneak in, you know, some tuning adjustments here and there. Or for slide work as well. That's my like, yeah. my dark secret no one wants to hear is that every time I'm playing slide, my, I'm eagle-eyed straight on the tuner. Like, <laughs> yeah, so next up I would go with like a delay um, or something that adds a little bit of character. So I brought a Boss DD5 along, an Analog Man modded one that just gives a couple different tonal options. And I like to set that up usually with a little bit of a slap back, especially for if I'm like on a small pedal board where I'm, you know, playing bars and covers and that kind of thing. This is going to be a fun little game. Oh, that's killer. <laughs> Yeah. And if you want to be in a mid 2000s, like. <laughs> like shoegazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You could definitely do that. You could do a country gig. You could do a oh, shoegaze gig. You could easy. be ambient with just two pedals. It's and hey, you take a little tap tempo, you plug it in. Now you can play like the edge. You can get your dotted eighth. You can do your ping pong. Will this take delays. a tap? Yeah, it will, right in there. And so, yeah, you can be beat sync it and get it to sound really, uh, you know, wide and ambient if you want, but. For the most part, when I'm using something like the DD5, or I've got like a Strymon Volante, a couple other pedals, uh, getting a good like slap back kind of room sound will be the first thing I'll, I'll try and figure out. Mm -hmm. um, something that doesn't necessarily cover up the guitar. Like I still want it to sound like a guitar. So we can have a more like a brighter, spankier. And then don't. Yeah. That's cool. This is the one I used forever, and I feel like this is doing as much as this did. Oh yeah. With that one tone switch, like this, these whole tone knobs, like you could oh, yeah. change the decay. This was really cool. It just takes up so much space. I love the switches though. It is, it's, and it's heavy too. Oh dang, dude, you could like, you could throw this at someone. <laughs> you just have a license for this kind of thing. The only bummer, it's not true stereo. It has two outputs, but it's not stereo. I, I don't understand. Yeah, that's a whole thing to talk about as well. Like, do you need to run stereo to be I'd had? I say no. There are, totally. Oddly, but oddly enough, the place that I play most now, like a, a church gig, a yeah, worship yeah. gig, where that dotted eighth is very important, most of the time I am playing stereo. Yeah. But any other time, I'm not. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Well, and it really depends on what you're trying to do. Like, if I'm the only guitar in a band, yeah, I'd want to run stereo. If anything, just for the extra little bit of width, you can get some cool musical moments with ping-ponging delays. Mm -hmm. But 
when recording, I mean, I'm pretty much just plugged straight into an amp. So with like having a smaller rig in mind, having a couple different gain options, I think is really important. So, so I'll string these all together, but I like having at the very least, just a boost to the amp harder for like a solo or, you know, so having a couple different gain options can give you a couple different textures that it's almost like plugging into a different amp. So I've got a couple different things here that we'll, uh, we'll show off. We got really long cables. The spaghetti is real. It's like the underside of every pedal board I've ever built. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got a couple more pedals in line right now. We'll start off with just like an overdrive. So I've got a couple different options that we can show off, but I'll start off with the Walrus 385. I, I love it. This is one of my go-tos. It actually doesn't live on a pedal board, but it lives like, I've got a little bucket that I bring around uh, when I'm tracking. This is usually the first overdrive pedal I'll bring out. It does a cool thing where it tucks the low end and the high end kind of focuses a little bit. Clone of a old 385 projector amp. I was uh, gonna say, it has a projector right here. Yeah, so it's that like, uh, Austin Hooks projector amp kind of okay. thing in a box. Uh, we had the actual amp for a while uh, at our studio, and it's surprisingly close. Like when I would use both of them together, it'd get kind of funny, but it does this cool breakup. So I'll, I'll show it off. Uh, here's just amp. gives you an extra gain stage to you know pop in for a solo or what sound a little more rock and roll like having a good overdrive or two can really help i like that the more you push into this it doesn't get harsh i'm a tube screamer boy and we've talked about this and most of the time i'm using a tube screamer is drive down yep. volume up because the drive isn't necessarily what you use this pedal yeah. but that's cool it kind of does both for sure i mean like, you can <laughs> clean it up and get really like Clean and sparkly, especially with your volume knob. And I just love drive pedals that do that, where it's not, doesn't restrict your playing. I yeah. wanna try a hook sand. Oh dude, right, they're super cool. There's a couple different kinds of drives, and this isn't the video for that, but you've got like soft clipping, hard clipping, you've got transparent drives, you've got like boosts, that kind of thing. Um, and we'll go through boosts, but this is another drive pedal that I like a lot. It's the 1981 uh, DRV drive, uh, but it's close to a white face rat, but with some a white faced rat. Yeah, so it's a specific year. I'm not super educated on it, but I like how it sounds, and that's kind of just the majority of my decision making is oh, it looks cool and sounds cool. Just amp. <laughs> I like that too. Uh, and it gets almost into fuzz territory when you push the drive up like a compressor. Yeah, and... it got the grip. Yeah, it definitely goes. Wow. Uh, Yeah, that's a fun sound. And this, again, I'm saying this is this is a selfish video because I, I want to buy some pedals. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got all the colors in the world for you to pick from on that. But the thing with pedals, like, yeah. yeah, there's a ton of videos out there, but like sitting down and actually doing this, 
I've played guitar for decades, but like I, you get stuck in habits. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And just sitting down and playing with stuff like this on my cab, getting to hear what some of this stuff does, it's like it's pretty eye opening. Oh yeah, well, and the you know different guitars and different amps, they all react a little differently depending on like how you play. So it's less about like this is gospel, and we're just figuring it out. Like what works for you. Next up, let's talk about fuzz. I like fuzz a lot. This is the world we've talked about. I want to go down. Yeah. Teach so me your ways. I'm going to real quick run off camera and grab another fuzz to show off. Right? Also doubles as a fidget toy. Well, for a while, like we kept a bunch of pedals right when we moved into our apartment on our ottoman. I'd be sitting watching TV like... <laughs> like kind of thing. And my wife would get so mad because I'd be... So yeah, fuzz is the whole thing. So I, I love fuzz. It's probably my favorite effect. It means it gives you a massively different tonal option. I view it like switching a different channel on an amp almost. Because um, it's not necessarily augmenting your current amp. It's doing a lot of its own clipping and a lot of its own uh, distortion in the pedal. So we've, I brought two with me today um, that we'll talk about here. So first we've got the JHS Cheese Ball. That's based off of the, I think it's Love Tone. I'm gonna get that wrong. Uh, big cheese, and it is a super nasty little fuzz. Um, so here's just the amp again. like a circuit option yeah so it's got a couple different tonal uh like tone stack circuits you can throw in it so off removes the tone stack completely um and it gets real bright and like kind of gated and you know stiff now uh, explain a tone stack like i'm five different capacitors diodes uh, affect your sound differently and when you run signal through those different components they affect how much high yeah. end there is how much low end there is how much it mid-range is scooped out or pushed and the Big Cheese has a couple different tone stacks in there built in so that you can just have more options. You got different flavors of cheese. Different flavors of cheese. You got like a Gouda, you got your, your sharp cheddar. So if we're going for like, <laughs> what's a really smooth cheese? I'm a not, Brie. Yeah, like a Brie. So tone stack one is like the Brie. It's, it's a little smoother. Scoops out the mid range a little bit. Sits really nicely around a vocal. Yeah. Like I like for that sound for like the wall of guitars. It can get pretty fun. Um, tone stack two, and now it's all getting into like gated fuzz, a little more mid rangey, more focused. So stuff will cut better. <laughs> Is with the right fuzz and like the right cables, if you back off your volume, yeah. So that's volume knob at like two. That just sounds like clean amp. Yeah. Yeah. And then another thing I love to do. Really gated. This is what gated. I think of when I think of a fuzz. Yeah, really gated, lots of gain where it's like collapsing on itself. Some of the early fuzzes were pitches like make your guitar sound like a trumpet or like, like a brass section. That's kind of what I think of with this sound. If you're deaf, it sounds like a trumpet. <laughs> I'm yeah. surprised not using fuzzes, how versatile that can actually be. Oh yeah, well and that's with four knobs. You can get really versatile with just one knob. So this is my favorite fuzz. It's the uh, Mythos Pedals Golden Fleece, AU Gold. It's a modded version of it. Pretty much on my pedal board all the time. And it is just simply divine. Oh 
yeah, and that's just a simple volume. But what I love about this fuzz is how uh, dynamic and responsive it is. So if you roll back your volume, same thing. That's like in the pushed amp territory of sound. And that's with volume knob at like six. Really articulate, like the top end really sparkles and you know, you hear the pick attack. I've met a lot of players that don't necessarily love fuzz, but that's because they've only tried one or two fuzzes out. Like, I really think it's as much of a personal thing as the guitar you play, the amp you're picking, finding the right pairing of a fuzz. Not easy. It's not just go to the store, pick one up off the shelf and love it. I mean, hopefully. I'm now like rethinking all of my stuff because I have two tube screamers, which I freaking love, but they're not necessarily versatile yeah i mean i do love tube screamers though like why don't we plug both of these in yeah and since i'm a good american you know i'll grab the stratocaster <laughs> boom we'll there do we it. go we'll go like that yeah so here's just I'm, i'll do like mainly single coil stuff so like neck pickup in between positions This one, um, I modded. Yeah. So I'd remove the the low cut. Out yeah. Of it. I was so gonna say it felt pretty full. It, like, it's more, and I changed some of the capacitors to be a little more clony, which I probably wouldn't do again. But it's fun. It's still a cool little thing. This one's weird. Yeah. Let's try it out. All the low end is gone. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like nice and focused. In my little mind, how I always use a tube screamer is volume all the way up, gain all the way down. Yep. Drive all the way down. Because you're just using it to push into an amp and kind do of whatever you it. want, like a pre-EQ. Yeah. It's an EQ pedal more than it is a drive pedal to me. Which, now thinking about it, I need some other color on the board. But it'd be interesting to go back and forth. Now these are not, this is not necessarily an 808. This is a TS9. But this is modded and does have that low end in it where it would otherwise be cut. So I want to kind of go back and forth with them set like as close as I can just to get the different flavors. Yeah. It's really close. It does the thing. Yeah. It's a useless mod. I mean, I definitely think it. the low end feels a little more big. Yeah, but now sitting here with those, I'm like, I want those and not these. <laughs> well, it's a big world out there. There's so many over here. So, back to square one. Yeah. Let's finish what we started. What's the last pedal? Is it this guy? Yeah, so to me, a boost is essential. More than having an overdrive, more than having a thousand reverb pedals. I think having a good boost that you know how to use and you know, accents your guitar and your amp can be one of the best tools to have uh, in your arsenal on your pedal board. That kind of thing. I have a bunch of boosts. Today I brought the TC Electronics Spark Mini. Uh, again, it lives in like my backpack, like pedal bucket. And all it's doing is making the guitar louder. It's just hitting the amp harder and it's simple. And that's kind of why I like it. You got one knob, it's hard to mess that up. 
So why why would you put it here and not at the beginning? Yeah, so I'd want it to hit the amp harder. And this is a personal thing. Yeah. I know players that do the other way around. I like to have an extra gain stage that's not hitting my overdrives harder, but uh, instead hitting my amp harder. So it's after my overdrives, after my fuzzes. And that gives me a lot of dynamic range. So I can turn on an overdrive pedal without necessarily getting louder. Mm -hmm. It can just get gainier. With the boost, if I wanted to get louder and punch through the mix a little more. That's interesting because I... I definitely keep mine at the beginning. Yeah. That's a cool way to think about it. When I was in the digital world more, I'd actually put one after my reverbs and delays as well so that I could get the really blown out amp, like shoegazy thing, <laughs> just by turning on a boost. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And we'll just do a quick demo of it, so. Yeah. If I'm being honest, like that, nice that's more of the Tube Screamer thing than I am using my Tube Screamer right? for. <laughs> well, and it's the spark is great because it's completely flat. It's not mm -hmm. like pushing mid-range or you know accenting the top end. Just pushing harder. Yeah, super flat, really clean. You can't make it distort even if you tried. And I have a couple different boosts that we'll, you know, we'll go through a little bit later, but spark is great. And just hold on to the switch for a moment. Like turn it off and hold it. Now let go. Momentary. Yeah. So if you just want to hit a solo. Yep. Oh yeah, you know it. Ah, that that's really handy. Yeah. I've used it just to, for like chuckas. Yeah. Just... <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. So if I were going for like a stripped down little board, really this is close to what it would look like. Especially if I don't need to cover a ton of total bases. I just need you know good guitar sounds, something that's dirty. You know, with some options to make it kind of weird and funny uh, with a delay. Like this is where I'd go. I might put this on. But we'll see. You know, it really depends. And that's the fun part. It doesn't have to stay the same. And you don't need these exact options either, but having, I could definitely see employing a fuzz for yeah. myself now. A good dry, and this is, this is tasty. Bro, right. And I mean, this could replace my Tube Screamer, easy. Oh yeah, and it's 35 bucks. And this is way smaller than my <laughs> delay, which is 10 years old and sounds way better. Thanks to Jonah for coming by. I had a blast. I actually learned a lot. It's interesting to sit here and play with pedals like that through some of my own gear. It was a little eye-opening, and I'd be lying if I didn't immediately go to reverb and put stuff in my cart. If you like this one, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see the next ones where we go into detail about a much more extensive setup, as well as a bass video coming up very shortly. Let me know down in the comments below if you like videos like this. I'm interested to see if this is something you guys would enjoy more of. As always, I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. I'll see you in the next one.